Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be talking you through and showing you what I have fed my family this last week. I'm going to start with tonight's meal, which is a chicken and butternut squash casserole. It is so delicious and so easy as well. This is a perfect recipe to cook in your slow cooker, but today I'm going to be showing you how I cook mine in my Le Creuset pot. I'm gonna list all of the ingredients down below in my description box. So if you want to cook any of these meals, then I'll make it as easy as I I can do for you with adding the quantities and the different ingredients you're going to need. If you're watching this for the first time, I would love for you to subscribe. I post a brand new recipe video on my channel at 7 a.m. UK time every single Sunday. And also over my Instagram, I post loads of different foodie content too. So if you need some real inspiration, I would love for you to follow me over here and on Instagram as well. With all that said, I'm just gonna jump straight on into this first recipe. And this is how I make my chicken and butternut squash casserole. So what I've got here is I've got a butternut squash, I've got some potatoes, one onion, garlic cloves, I'll use three. I've got a chicken stock, lemon, thyme, and I've got some creme fraiche here as well. You can use cream, you can use single cream, double cream, or you can use some yogurt, whatever you have got. Um, I've got some chia batter breads here, and then I went to the butchers and I got some boneless chicken thighs as well. I find for this meal, chicken thighs are the best. This is actually a gusto meal. I love when I've had gusto boxes in the past, I love keeping the little cards and then I recreate the meals afterwards. So basically what you want to start off by doing is just sorting off your onion and your garlic, and you also want to cut Cut your potatoes up into little cubes along with your butternut squash as well. I just saute those off for a couple of minutes. So as you can see I've had to swap my pots over because I actually decided to double up on the recipe ingredients here so that I have leftovers for lunchtime tomorrow. So all of this did not fit in my Le Creuset pot so I've now got it in this massive massive soup pot instead. In a separate pan, I'm just going to be browning off my chicken before I put it into my casserole dish. Once my thighs are in, I will then go ahead and add in two teaspoons of thyme. You also want to season this dish with some salt and pepper as well. You also then want to add in six to 800 mils of chicken stock. You just want to make sure your stock is covering all of your food. That way, all of it's going to get cooked through evenly and there's going to be enough liquid in there to make it like a nice little casserole because you're gonna be dunking in your chia batter breads. And you also want to add in the juice of a whole lemon and you also want to add in 400 mils of your creme fraiche. Just let everything cook away for ages. So I put this on a low temperature and I just let it bubble away. That's why I said it's also good if you're cooking this in a slow cooker because you can shove it all in in the morning and it'll be ready for you in the evening. So I've cooked this for like two or three hours. So as you can see, the chicken is like all shredded and just so, so delicious. And now it's ready to serve. So for tonight's dinner, we are having some baked fish. So I have got these hake fillets. These come frozen, they're great. You just pop them in your freezer and then you can use them whenever you want. You can use them day one or you can use them like two months later or even longer, it's completely up to you. So I always take them out and defrost them first. And then what I'm going to do with these potatoes, I'm going to make up some mash. I keep the skins on because that's where all the goodness is. So I will just chop them up and then pop them into a pot of water, bring them up to the boil and once they're nice and soft I will mash them together with some butter, some milk and some salt and pepper. While those are cooking up I will also make myself a little tomato sauce. So I have got some tomato passata, this one has got garlic and herbs in it as well but I will also add my own to just give it some extra flavour. So I'll add one um, onion, three cloves of garlic, and I've got two peppers here as well, and I've also got some oregano. So what I'll do is I'll saute off my onion and my garlic, as well as my diced up peppers. Once those have sauteed for a few minutes, I'll then add in my passata along with a teaspoon of oregano, and just let that cook through for a good, 
15 minutes or so reducing right down and like making sure all those nice flavors are nicely combined. I will then get these um, black olives and I will cut them in half and add that into my tomato sauce as well. Adding the olives just really gives this sauce such a nice flavor to it. So you can leave them out if you want to, but I would highly recommend adding them. Even if you don't like olives, I just think you will like these olives added into this meal. While this is all cooking, I'll be baking my hake fillets in the oven. So I will just put some lemon juice and some salt and pepper on top of these hake fillets. I'll pop them into the oven for about 15 minutes on 190 degrees centigrade and then I will just put everything together. We serve the mashed potato on the bottom, put some tomato sauce on top and then you lay your hake fillets over the top of that and just eat it all together and it's really really delicious and healthy too. For tonight's dinner, we're going to be having a lamb curry. So I have got some diced lamb shoulder here. I got two packs because I think um, it's always nice to have lots of meat in your curry. I have then got one red onion and I've sliced it up quite finely. I've got a couple of cloves of garlic. They're quite small ones, so that's why I've got quite a few, but I probably use three cloves of garlic for this. And I've got a nice big nub of ginger as well, which I will grate. For my spices, I have got some garam masala here. I just buy like a big pack of it and then I decant it into here um, so that I make sure I always have some at home. I've got some turmeric. I've also got some whole cloves here as well. This is something a little bit different that I'm going to add into my curry, but it's really nice. I've also got some cane pepper, some tomato puree, chopped tomatoes, salt and pepper, and I've got 600 mils of um, lamb stock here as well. And I'll also, instead of using coconut milk, I'll use some yogurt in here as well. And then the reason I've got some flour here is because I'm going to make my own naan breads. I will link the recipe down below, um, like the full recipe for making my naan breads, but it's so easy. You literally just combine some yogurt and some flour together and it's delicious. They come out so nice and you can put whatever filling in that you want. So I'm going to just start off by sorting off my onion, garlic and my ginger. And then once those have sorted for a few minutes, I'll pop in my diced lamb shoulder in there as well brown that off. I'm going to be cooking this in the slow cooker. So once I've browned off my lamb shoulder, I will pop everything into my slow cooker and I will then start adding in my spices and my liquids. So I will add in two tablespoons of garam masala and then I will add in one teaspoon of turmeric, five cloves and one teaspoon of cane pepper as well. Along with that, I'll put in two tablespoons of tomato puree, the tin of chopped tomatoes, along with my 600 mils of lamb stock as well. I also forgot to show you that I'm going to be adding some chopped coriander in here as well. I just buy this chopped coriander from Iceland. It comes frozen, pre-chopped, so I just will literally put in two teaspoons of this into my slow cooker as well. I will let that cook on low for a good six to eight hours. And half an hour before I'm ready to serve, I will add in my natural yogurt. So I will just add in a good 300 mils of natural yogurt to my slow cooker and let that all combine. While that's cooking for the last half an hour, I will also make up my naan breads. So like I said, it's just a yogurt and flour mix that I will add together and then I just fry them in a frying pan for a few minutes with no extra oil. We also like to have this with some rice on the side as well and some chutney. So I will just cook some of that up on the side and then once my rice and my naans are cooked, I will just put everything together and enjoy. Right, so tonight we're going to be having ham, egg and chips. So to make my chips, I have got two massive sweet potatoes here. So I'll make them into like chips or wedges shapes. And then what I have got here is I've put a gammon joint in here. It's been in the slow cooker on low for eight hours. So it's really, really nice and soft and cooked through perfectly. What I'm going to do with this is now remove it from the slow cooker and I'm going to cut away the kind of tougher um, skin part of the gammon joint. And then once I've done that, I'm then going to score into the fat on top of the gammon joint. And I will then get this mixture, which I have mixed up before. This is a mixture of, um, I've got soy sauce, some honey, I've got some ground ginger in here and some garlic granules as well. And I've just mixed it all together. So once I've scored into the fat of the gammon joint, I'm then just going to spoon over this soy and honey mixture. Then I'm gonna pop it into the oven on 200 degrees centigrade for about 
25 minutes or half an hour until the fat has gone so nice and crispy. In the meantime, my wedges will be in my air fryer cooking up. I'll just put a little bit of olive oil on them and some paprika. And then once everything's got about five minutes left to go, I will just fry up some eggs and then I'll put it all together and serve it like that. tonight's dinner we are having a shepherd's pie but a veggie shepherd's pie so I have got two bags of corn mince here and then to make my shepherd's pie I will also use one onion three cloves of garlic and these carrots so I've just got like five carrots here but obviously this one's just tiny so I thought I'd just chug it in there as well I have also got a veggie stock cube I'll probably add in about 100 mils of veg stock with this and then I've got this tomato passata which is a garlic and herb passata and then obviously to go on the top I will do some mashed potato I always keep the skin on my potatoes because because that's where so much of the goodness is. So to make this meal, I'm just going to saute off my onion, my garlic and my carrots. And my carrots, as you can see, are diced up into quite small little chunks. Once those have sauteed, I will then add in my corn mince, my 100 mils of veggie stock, as well as my tomato passata, some salt and pepper and some mixed herbs too. I forgot to tell you, but I'm actually also going to add in a little bit of liam perrins and some soy sauce as well. This liam perrins is Worcestershire sauce. I'll just let that all simmer away and cook for a little while until my potatoes are nice and soft and ready to mash. To mash my potatoes, I'll just add in some salt and pepper and some butter and milk and give them a really, really good mashing so they're nice and smooth. I'll then pop my corn mince into a baking dish and I'll spoon my mash on top of it and spread it out evenly. I will then also just grate some cheese and sprinkle that over the top. And I'll just cook this in the oven for about half an hour. As everything has been cooked already, you're literally just putting it in the oven to heat up and crispen up on the top. So after half an hour at 190 degrees centigrade, your corn cottage pie is ready to eat. And as you can see, I like to serve mine with some peas on the side too. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.